Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm COL Trader Summit welcome to Mr. Edmund Lee. How many of you has ever catched a falling knife? Falling knife? Ang 80 per 90 percent. Mura na. So, I'd like to share this quote before I get into my presentation. And if you go through history and you read all the wisest and all the best quotes in the all world, they all say the same thing. Okay? Wise men say, and not without reason, that whoever wishes to foresee the future must consult the past. And so what's important is that if we're going to be talking about reversals and catching falling knives, we have to look at what has done before. So, and this is not something that I planned, and I did not coordinate with anybody else. Okay? So this is Semerara. Down 30%. 50 pesos from the high drops 30% to as low as 35 pesos per share. Mura, cash dividend, 6-7%. Falls another 35%. From 35 all the way to 35 buck, 25 bucks per share. Mas mura. CHP. From 10 pesos, 11 pesos in this area, drops 40% in two months. Two months, 40%. Mura. Falls another from 7 pesos to 3 pesos at the bottom. Mura, mura. So what do you call a stock that drops from 80% to 90%? It means another 50%. And so my point in this discussion, okay, is that catching falling knives, is it really worth it. Okay? And this is a million dollar question. It's because if you notice about Chairman's presentation a while ago, all the money he made, lahat crisis. Not naman to crisis eh. Okay? So now, the question is, is it right? Is it wrong? The answer to all of that is that that's what we're going to be approaching this afternoon. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's only two ways that you can look at all these crises. You can see it scared, or you can see it as opportunity. Or you can just probably see it as nowhere to go. Okay? So this is my point of my discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm supposed to be talking about going against the herd. So the question is, is the herd always wrong? And how we're going to approach everything today is from an FTSR framework. And my brother this morning already illustrated that the FTSR, which is F for fundamentals, T for technicals, S for sentiment, and R for risk management. So there's always four parts in a story that we have to understand. It's not just the technical portion. It's not just the price. And it's very common for all of us here to just focus on the price. What happened? Everybody sees CHP go down 90%. Everybody sees SurePass going down 90%. Everybody sees all these different stocks that have fallen 50, 60% without truly, truly identifying why most of these went down. Because I'll tell you, even when these guys are dropping 70, 80, 90%, sometimes, sometimes, I repeat, these, these are the parts where there's so much opportunity. Okay, so our, our job for this afternoon is basically trying to identify whether it's an opportunity or not. Okay? And basically in this FTSR framework, if you notice, is that it's a weighing scale. So you have sentiment in the middle and you have risk management in the middle. And on the left side and on the right side, you have fundamental analysis and technical analysis. And the reason why there are weighing scale is because usually for different systems, people have different priorities for reversals. Okay, four reversals. What's more important is fundamental analysis. Let's be clear. 
Okay? Then technical analysis. If you're trading and you're with the trend, meaning everything going up, okay lang, that's fine. When you're trading reversals, you're making the assumption that everybody else is wrong. And that's a hard assumption. Okay? Because majority of the time, stocks go down, there is legitimate reason. I repeat, every time stocks are going down and it's something solely to the company, there is legitimate reason as to why that company is going down. And that's why fundamental analysis is so important when it comes to reversals. What do I mean? We see a lot of times everybody trying falling, buying falling knives in speculative companies where there's nothing inside. The question is, did most of these companies deserve to go down in the first place? And the answer is, yes. Wala naman laman eh. Kaya nga basura eh. Basura, umakat ng 100 pesos. Buba na 50, mura na. Wala naman laman eh. Kaya nga basura eh. Pag piso. Basura pa rin eh. It doesn't change the fact. So that's why when you're understanding reversals, I keep on telling people fundamental analysis is so important in identifying opportunity. And so, first and foremost, we have sentiment. And just to show you and illustrate to you guys what reversals and capitulation is all about, is that this is the emotional cycle of investing. And this chart, if you see this, it happens a lot of times. Whether it's in different asset classes, such as Bitcoin, in the property market, in Nikkei, in all your speculative issues, this is a common chart you'll see over and over and over again. Okay? What we're trying to assume, if this is the, if this is the market, what we're trying to assume is that this part here, these drops that happen, one, two, three, and plus this part here at the bottom, okay, we're trying to participate at what we call the left side of the emotional cycle of investing. There's always the left side, which is in this part, the panic situations, and we're trying to find a way to get and maximize our return when these prices are dropping at the left side. Okay? What do I mean by the left side? Why do we always have to look at the left side? It means the reality of the situation is that there's nothing wrong with the company. Okay? If we're looking at the right side here, on this end, the drops that you see here, one, two, three, four. This is the part we don't want. Okay? We don't want to be participating in companies when there is a problem. Okay? If the nature of the problem is not temporary, meaning there's a fundamental problem to the company, please, by all means, avoid reversals and avoid capitulation trading. Because I'll tell you, for most cases, it will go down even lower. Okay? So I hope that's clear. So we're looking for the ones at the left side, again, not the ones at the right side of the equation. Okay, so why does it work? Because if you look at the last five times the stock market dropped in the last 10 years, okay, we've had a 20 plus percent drop five times in the last 10 years. So meaning every two years, year and a half, we've had significant drops in the stock market. Okay? Now, if you're able to just step aside and find a way to enter when it's going down and there's nothing wrong with most of these issues, then I'll tell you, you could have saved so much money and you could have made also so much money in the stock market. But the biggest question of all is that every time it drops, parang dududa ka. Parang feeling mo, bumababa ang mega world. Parang may problema ang mega world. Bumababa ang ayalalan, feeling mo may problema. And every time it drops, you'll always question yourself, baka di this time, it's different. And those are the five most dangerous words in the stock market. Because if you notice, in the last four years, every time it drops, you go to Bloomberg, you go to CNBC, you go to all these different news channels, and they tell you, bear market territory na tayo. Every time stock markets are dropping 30-40%, wala, may problema na yan, magbabankrap na ang city of dreams. Magbabankrap na ang CHP. Magbabankrap na, XXX, so on and so forth. Okay? And I'll tell you at the worst times, well, it could be right, 
It could be wrong, but what's more important is trying to va verify what most of this information is telling you at that point in time. Okay? So, some important points for reversals and capitulation. Number one, we have to identify what our objectives are. And basically, from what I explained a while ago, we're looking at stocks that are still at the left side. And we talk about left side, walam problema. They're still growing. So, we're trying to take advantage of extreme panic sell offs with an ongoing bullish primary trend. That's the first and foremost basic objective. We're not trying to catch bottoms on stocks that have problems that are at the bearish right. We're looking for the ones that are still in a bullish primary trend. And there are two assumptions we have to make. First is that these, these drops that are happening are primarily driven by market-driven sell-offs. Okay? Not fundamentals. Okay? So for example, if Ayala Land is dropping, and it's growing at 15% per year, but it's dropping because the entire market is also dropping, that is fine. Okay lang yan. Please do not participate in companies where it's going down, but earnings continue to bleed, especially in the short term. People say fundamentals don't matter in the short term. That is not true. What will move prices in the short or the long? is still fundamentals. The only difference is, in the short term, it's the perception of fundamentals that is driving price in the short term. Okay? So what's important is that when you see stocks that are dropping in the short term, please learn the difference of market-driven sell-offs versus something that is driven by problems in the business. Okay? And the second assumption, okay, where most of us made majority of our money, okay, is what we call turnarounds. And this is also very hard to identify because the second assumption is, if not A, you can go to B if fundamentals are changing. There is a turnaround happening in the business. There's, and best examples probably today is like with SSI. When it IPO'd, the funny part about SSI, ako pa yung analyst na CUL. Okay, and that's been that long. And when SSI IPO'd, one of the biggest challenges in SSI was that they expanded so fast and they had huge amounts of inventory. And the problem is, when it comes to clothing, nalalaos. So pag nalalaos, what do you do? Very good. Sale. And pag sale, hindi na benta. Ano pag ginagawa mo? Extra sale. Buy to 90% off. Paano pag hindi pa na benta? Pamigay mo na lang. Exactly. Right? And they were growing so much that they had so much inventory that for the last six years, they had to go through a store rationalization. And that's why the price of SSI went from 13 to as low as 150, I believe. And the last four years, it's been at this price. But the last year, something changed. And the business now, after closing down for the last four or five years, for the first time last year, SSI started to grow. Now, that's the beauty about it. It's because now you see something changing. Now that's the difficult part to spot. Okay? So when you're trading reversals, it's usually A, driven by market. The second one is where most of us made a lot of money. It's trying to identify these turnarounds, which I'll talk more about later. Okay? And three is that stock prices here, your expectations will now revert back to their fair price. Prices. Okay? And that's the important part. And I'll tell you, CEO of Financial and what April and the rest of the team has done, the last year alone, they've spotted SSI, they gave you first gen, they gave you Mrs. G, they gave you Maxis. The question is, binirin ba? That's the question. Okay? So a lot of things turn around in the last, not even the last year, I'd probably say last three months. It's all there. They wrote about it. Everything was there. But the question is, were you mentally prepared to see it? That's the million-dollar question. Because obviously, if you saw it, hopefully you wouldn't be attending this class anymore. So our job here for this afternoon is trying to give you guys insight and in how to take advantage when things are actually stabilizing. Okay? Clear so far? Clear? Good. So, just to give you guys an example, this is Ayala Land. So what we're looking for is prices dropping 
because it's driven by the market. So I just wanted to show to you guys, this is the PSEI at the top, and this is the drop that happened in 2015. This is Ayala Land. This drop here, sabay nangyari. Umakit ang market, umakit din Ayala Land. Market went down, Ayala Land also went down. Okay? Sorry, this is Ayala Land. This is the PSEI. Okay? So PSEI went down, Ayala Land also went down. Okay? Now the market started to rally, Ayala Land nauna na. Okay? So when you're looking for drops and you're looking for sell-offs, the easiest one, okay, the easiest one is to look for sell-offs driven by the market, not driven by fundamentals. Okay? So why, why, why do these sell-offs happen in the first place? Right? Why bother? Okay? Because I'll tell you, it's two things. When people are looking at global and liquidation by foreign funds, I will tell you, 50%, okay, 50 to 60% of all movement and volume in the stock market are done by foreigners, by foreign funds. So you have to understand how foreigners also think. Okay? So when you look at stocks and you're seeing sell-offs happening because it's largely driven by foreigners, I'll tell you, the foreigners will always sell at the bottom and will always buy at the top. Okay? No matter what you say. Okay? Because these guys are handling $10, $20 billion of account. And when they want to get out of a certain country, they'll start to give you an order of a $10 billion fund and they'll give an order. $10 million sa Pinas, benta nyo na lahat yan. At all, at any price. That's how they act. Because what's $10 million to a $10 billion or $100 billion fund? It's nothing. Right? So when these guys give orders, it's always orders to finish at any price. And that's why when you see liquidation happening in the Philippines, and you can look at this for all emerging markets in Indonesia and Vietnam, when the foreigners sell, sabay-sabay lahat yan. Okay? Hindi kayo yung sumusuka. Kayo yung nasusuka. Sila yung sumusuka. Problema lang, dapat sinasalo niyo yung suka niya. I'm just kidding. That's kind of disgusting. But uh, my point is, right? when these guys are throwing up, they'll always have a level of exaggeration. And when that exaggeration happens, that becomes huge opportunity for us here in trading. Okay? Second is fundamentals or earnings intact for the next six months to one year. Okay? And if you look at the stocks today that are rallying today, like what Juan has showed this morning, he showed you the property was the strongest. Right? And the weakest was mining. And if you look at the fundamentals and what's happening on a corporate basis, you should be able to identify the property sector is still growing, the banking sector is still growing, consumer sector is still growing, but the mining is not. Okay, so from that standpoint alone, please, if you're buying a laggard, there's a reason why they are lagging. Okay? So please, if you look at the market and it's dropping, by all means, do not the ones that is weaker than the market. Okay? And this goes for number three, please avoid speculative issues. Okay? We don't want to buy cheap in speculative issues. If you're buying, buying high and selling higher, which we did in last year for Trader Summit last year for Momentum Trading, that is fine. That's the type of strategy you should be doing. But if you're buying companies Okay, that have nothing inside and it's becoming cheaper and cheaper, I will tell you, it will never stop becoming cheaper. Okay? So, pag wala kayo naalala, pabigat, marami, kailangan ba alamin tong lahat ng fundamental analysis to? My point is, huwag nyo nang pansinin. The fastest way is just to buy an index fund. Okay? So, what I'm trying to point out is that I'll give you guys identif identification to understand the panic selling and then the reversal. And then if you don't know what stock you want to be buying, it's harder for you to pick and choose. The fastest way for you to participate is just to buy an index fund when it's about to reverse. Okay? Clear? So there are many index funds. There's three, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Ed? Four. Okay, there's four index funds. I'm not allowed to recommend. So pick and choose which one of those four. Differences should be minimal. 
Okay? So, what we're going to do now is to give you guys a checklist for fundamental analysis. And here we go. There are three things you always have to ask when it comes to looking at companies. First is, what is the market pricing in? Second is, where's the mispricing? And three is, how will the market see what you see? If you can answer all three questions all the time, I will tell you, you will become like Benjamin Graham and Warren Buffett, long-term investing and rich over time, which is correct. Okay? Now, to break down those three questions, to understand what is mispriced, the first thing that you have to do is to understand what is the business reality. Okay? Now, this portion about business reality is understanding, again, financials, understanding the company, understanding what it does, what its product, what its competitive advantage. Two is, what is the market now pricing in? Okay? Now, this is what's happening to the company. It's making so much money. Jollibee, every year in and out, so many people flock to Jollibee. Jollibee is always full, whether we're in a bad market or not. It's always growing at 10, 15% per year because it's not just growing domestically, it's growing internationally all over the world. The next question is, does the market know it? Do you guys eat at it? Alam ba na tao, magandang Jollibee? Oh, that's why if you look at the valuations, it's always expensive. Bakit lagi hold ang Jollibee sa COL? For every year, every year umakyat. That's probably the only company, if you look at COL, and look at, and it's not just COL, but it's all brokers. It's the most expensive company, but every year, Jollibee just continues to go up every single year. Right? So, people like it. Market also likes it. So the thing is, how do we make money? It's hard. That's why it's hold. Okay? So the thing is, if you can go through these three questions all the time, okay? Sure press, lost 800 million. What is the market pricing in? Bankruptcy. Tama ba hindi? Baka. Gets ba? Right? If you can just do this process all the time. Max's chicken. Reversing. Business is changing. People are now going back in and it's showing because 30% growth. Market pricing in. One third the price of Jollibee. Mura. Baka pwede magbago. Okay? So actually, like what I say, it's easier said than done. Right? Obviously because I'm very familiar with most of these issues. Okay? But for majority of you, if you can go through this process of understanding these three questions all the time, Okay? And your ability to find this disparity, you will make a lot of money. Okay? And this is not what I'm trying to point out here is that this question here, what does the market think about that company? A lot of times, you will always get ahead. Meaning you'll see stuff before everybody else sees it. Example, first gen, mura, ayaw ng lahat. So it takes time for everybody else in the market to see what you see. That's why you need to understand charts and you need to understand technical analysis to find out when the market is about to see what you are seeing. But if you're not able to identify where the opportunity will come first, if there is a disparity, right, you'll not be able to mentally press that button and execute it and buy that stock. Okay? So... Some key points here about understanding. I know you don't like fundamentals, but I'll just explain it. Okay? When we're looking at sales and we're looking at gr growth in the business, there's always two things. Is sales growing or is sales slowing down? And sales is a function of two parts, price and volume. So if you're looking at business, don't just look at whether sales are going up. That's not the point. You always have to look at the function. Is prices going up or is it driven by higher volumes? And by all means, for most good businesses, you want a healthy combination of both. Okay? You don't want to be buying a business where sales is not growing. So if less people are shopping in SSI, please do not touch SSI. Okay? Second is about competition. Okay? Remember, when you look at sales, it's always two parts. If people are eating less in Shakey's, in Max's, where are, other, where are they actually eating more? That's what we want to know. 
Okay? So if you look at all three companies, from Jollibee to Shakey's to Max Chicken, which of the three are actually still growing in terms of sales? Okay? And you have to do this function by trying to understand not just yourself or that company, but understand where the sales of everybody else is also growing of competition. Oops. Okay? Second part is about margins. Okay? So people ask me what's more important, sales or how much you're making. I always tell people it's my margins. I don't want to do a business where I'm going to sell a product na talo. What's the point? Why am I going to build a business, sell a product when my cost to produce it is more expensive than my selling prices? That's ridiculous. Okay? So please remember, when you're understanding any single company, try to identify where that margins is going to be coming from. Okay? So some parts about understanding whether cost is going up. So one of the biggest themes last year was that we had a huge sell-off because of inflation, where all the cost of all goods sold went up last year, whether it's vegetable, whether it's rice, whether it's sugar, or even oil last year. And just by understanding where input cost is going up, you'll actually have an idea which industry should be affected the most. So sugar, sugar price is going up because of excise tax, because of lack of supply. So what industries will be affected? Carbonated drinks, coffee, three in one, right? So on and so forth. And if you understand that and you look at oil, perfect example, which industries will be affected by oil the most? Right? You'll have an idea what's going to happen to majority of the margins and profits of all these companies. Okay? Because there are two parts about here, about profits, about margins. It's controllable and uncontrollable. Most companies, most companies have their cost that is controllable. The things that are uncontrollable are usually the big factors, whether it's oil and, and usually input costs driven by global scenarios, not by local. Okay? And some other things to consider about the reality of the situation is regulatory and capital raising exercises. I just had to put it here because, how would I put it? Uh, the political uncertainty okay, has been positive for some, in some companies and has been negative for some other companies as also. Okay? So you have to understand what's happening, whether it's government contract, like our water today, excise taxes because of what happened with train, or something that is external, whether it's happening in a different country or not. Okay? Now, and the sec last part is about capital raising exercises. Usually, companies that are raising capital or plan to raise capital in the short term usually have some form of overhang. Okay? But that overhang normally, normally tends to be positive. Okay? If you're capital raising for a development of certain uh, PP&E, usually it's a positive sign. Okay? But normally, what happens in the short term, there is an overhang of shares because there's some people who don't want to come out with money anymore. Okay, case in point with CHP. Okay. Now, understanding that business reality, the second part about understanding stocks is what the market also thinks of it. So there are other parts, whether understanding valuations, PE, price to book, and it's not just understanding historical, but also understanding what the industry is also. So if you're looking at companies, whether it's a retailer or it's a grocery or it's a restaurant, please, don't just understand what that company is trading at. Also, look for comparisons in, different, in its own sector. Okay? And second part about expectations, if you want to have a better view, is understanding earnings result, whether it's growing or not, and versus what COL and other brokers have estimates on. Okay? Last but not the least, fair value should be used at least to just give you an idea what most brokerages are pricing in. Okay? Marami talaga. Kailangan ko bang alamin to lahat? The answer is yes, unfortunately. Okay? So I took this list and basically what I'll do is just do you guys a favor. Okay? These are the highest COL traded companies. Metrobank, MPI, Ali, Now, ISM Corporation, CHP, BDO, Jollibee, AC, and Meg. I'll skip the last four. 
because BDO is doing well, Jollibee is doing well, Ayala, despite what happened, um, should still do well, and Last Mega World is all new high also. So we'll talk about the first six. And the first six, I guess the best, and I looked at it, is all difficult for me to question. Okay? So let's start first with Metro Bank. Everybody's favorite bank. I don't know. Okay. Metro Bank. Lending growth, still growing. Lending, still growing. Positive, but it's lower compared to all its peers. Funding cost is growing, but nonetheless, it's still improving year on year. Okay? So what happened recently was that there's higher provisions due to the fraud incident in fiscal year 17 and with Hanchin plus the share rates offering, a uh, share rates offering, plus the MSCI increase in weighting. So what's happening today is that now you have an overhang because there's so much foreign funds that entered because of the MSCI, which now are still liquidating today. Okay? So that's what's happening on the reality of the situation. What does the market think? Obviously, it's cheap. Bayang si UL eh. Pag tinignan mo yung book value, murang mura. Okay? So the next question is, if it's cheap and it's still doing well, and we think that there's going to be an RRR cut, reserve requirement ratio cut, plus there's so much liquidity in the market right now, what's stopping it from going to be going up in the short term? And I'm still waiting for that as well. Okay? So my point is, okay, everything's positive, but the perception is still negative in the short term. Okay, so at least if you understand that portion, when a proper opportunity comes, then we can find a way to participate in MetroBank. Okay, so this is just the chart of the price to book for the last 10 years. If you notice, here today, it's trading at one times price to book. If you look at 2009, 2009, it's trading at the same valuation. So what my point is, is that Metrobank is already trading at recessionary levels since 2009. Okay? So is it cheap? It's been cheap for too long. <laughs> okay? Second, everybody's favorite. I don't know why everybody likes M's. Okay. Second, Metro Pacific, MPI. Okay? So what does MPI own? Four subsidiaries. Meralco, doing well. Obviously, because if you look at the price of Meralco, new high. Toll roads, indirectly, doing well then, growing also. Hospitals, growing also. That's why they're planning to do an IPO. Fourth one is water. Okay? And for the longest time, the biggest challenge with MPI, everybody knows it's cheap. Everybody knows it's growing. What's the problem? That's the million-dollar question with MPI. What's wrong with MPI? Okay? And the best answer I can give you is largely due to political uncertainty. Okay? Now the question is, new administration, will this change? Just to give you guys an insight, hindi rin malakas si MVP last administration. So in the Pinoy period, when you talk to them, they're waiting, pag tapos na yung term, ni Pinoy, baka umakit na. The funny part is, umakit nga. MPI went from 4 pesos to 750 in 2016. And then when the new president came into play, ayan na naman. Nanalo ng arbitration, ayaw pa rin magbayad. So all this political uncertainty, isipin mo, Manila water na nga yung walang tubig, pati Maynila, damay din. Okay? So what happens in these types of scenario, okay, what happens in these types of scenario when you have that political overhang, it's very difficult for people and other institutions to participate on. So when they say there's any political uncertainty, most institutions... Okay? So, please remember, even though everything is growing, maybe one day it might change, but at least we're still keeping our positive end that there's still opportunity. Next, if you look at it, 4 for 40, fair value is 8 pesos per share. Okay? So my point is, we're just trying to look at what's positive, what's negative, but we'll find a way to, find a, we'll find a way to enter it later on. I'm just showing to you guys what's happening on the fundamental checklist first. Okay. Third, Ayala Land. Nothing to talk about here in Ayala Land. Doing well, new high, growing every year, not just from the local, but even from the Chinese here that are buying our property. I'll skip this. Okay. Next, so now, four, five, six. Now ISM CHP. Okay. 
Now, you guys are in a trading summit. So, rule number one, if you're a trader, dapat wala ka na dito, obviously. Two, if you're an ipit ka, that means investor ka. Okay? So, the question is, if you're going to get stuck, I repeat, if you're going to get stuck in companies such as this, and you think that it's already cheap here at 250 I'll tell you, this can go to 150 1 peso, 50 cents, because there's nothing there. Okay? So I hope you guys are diversified enough and that you guys don't get stuck in these types of companies going forward. Okay? If you paid your tuition fee, congratulations. It's always the most bitter to go through that experience by yourself. Okay? So this is now. This is ISM. But do not think it cannot go down also. And just to give you guys the biggest difference behind now in ISM, now is 10 billion corporation. Oops. Oops, crap, sorry. Now is a 3.5 billion corporation. ISM is 156 billion. Okay? So just to put this into perspective, two ISMs is equal to globe. Okay? So people are already pricing in a level for ISM that one day they will already be the size of globe and PLDT going forward. Okay? So I'm telling you guys these things now because if it doesn't pan out, please, pride is cheap. Okay? And being wrong is a choice. Okay? Sorry. If you're wrong, that's fine. But being wrong and staying wrong is a choice. So please remember, okay, you have to know if you're trading these issues hanggang saan ka lang. That's why risk management this morning was one of the key topics. It's because when we looked at the top 10 number of stocks where our clients were stuck in, I was surprised when I saw 4, 5, and 6 being now ISM and Last but not the least, our favorite, CHP. Okay? The reason why I have to talk about CHP is because of the three, parang this time it's different. Parang this time it's different. Okay? So Semex, it's a 10 billion corporation and for the first time, for the first time, first quarter earnings came out, now CHP is growing. First time. Okay? Out of all the three corporates, CHP is the only one that's making money. The problem is, pagod na lahat ng tao. Okay? Market na, niloko mo pa kami, mag ka pa ng capital. Okay? To be honest, if you ask me, raising capital is actually a good sign. Okay? Because if it's raising capital to do something and do it well, syempre, that's always positive. But always the market is taking it wrong because wala ka na kinikita and I understand why the public and the shareholders are already pissed off. And I can understand why. Because everybody's been waiting for this to turn around. And here you are still raising capital here at the bottom. Okay? That's the negative side. But we have to look at things two ways. There's always positive, there's always negative. And like what Chairman said, we always have to keep an open mind. Okay? So for the first time in first quarter, released, I believe, one week ago, for the first time, it's actually growing. They still had hiccups, but with lower power costs, with rising prices, for the first time, earnings of CHP started to pick up. And hopefully, in the second quarter, which I'll explain later, is confirmation. Okay? Good. And if you look at this, it's trading at six times EV to EBITDA. And just to give you guys a perspective, most cement industries are at 10 to 11 EV to EBITDA. Okay. Good. Are we done? Okay. So, we're done with fundamentals. Now, we're going to the more important part. Okay. Now, you've done your checklist, okay, and you've tried to understand which companies are good, which companies are bad. Okay. Some tips that will help you finding that checklist for fundamentals is that usually at the bottom, most companies will go through a form of share buyback. Okay? And that's usually a positive end at the bottom, huh? not at the top. So when stocks are going down, you'll start to see a lot of companies. For example, SSI buy back their shares. 
Max is buying back their shares. The Gaisano family buying back their shares in Mrs. G. So on and so forth. Usually, usually, uh, these are good signs that at least they're trying to support share price. Okay? But at the very least, please, you have to combine not just what the insiders are doing, but what price is also telling you. Because sometimes the insiders can be wrong. Okay? Not all buybacks are correct. Just because he's buying back, baka nasusunog na. Nagkakaproblema na, nagbabuyback pa siya. Okay? So please identify whether the ones buying back, there's a legitimate reason as to why those conglomerates and those insiders are buying back their shares. Okay. So, pass forward. Other side of the coin about technical analysis. Okay. Remember, in counter trends, okay, Today's topic is all about reversals. In counter trends, there's always two aspects. First is the extreme fear or the capitulation. This is where Chairman made most of his money, if you notice in his slide a while ago. It's always in capitulation. Why? It's because if you notice all of his examples, when did they happen? 1987, financial crisis. 1999, sorry, 1997, financial crisis. 1987, uh, 2008, 2009, Sinoland, URC, so on and so forth. So most cases when Chairman was participating in these issues was when there was major, uh, major crisis happening all over the world. Okay? This is the first part about having capitulation. Oh, crap, sorry. This is the first part about having capitulation, primarily driven due to market fear. That's the first part. And normally, we will not talk about too much about capitulation, but you need to understand when capitulation is happening. And usually, if you look at all your momentum indicators to look for exaggeration, for us, we use ADX. If you don't know what ADX is, you can Google ADX to find out what ADX means. Some people use RSI. I don't think that would work because it's too short term. So for us, when we're looking for exaggerations in the market, we use ADX. And we're looking for stocks that are greater than 50. Here, 50. Okay? And if you use MACD also, which will not be as helpful, but it will just show you that MACD will just be way below zero. Okay? That's the first part about any single drop and every single counter chain. The first part is the extreme panic and the what we call capitulation. Second part is that after it cap capitulates, don't think, ah, get that in a straight line. So the reason why chairman always sells is because after it capitulates, maski na magrali yan, may magbabenta pa rin sa'yo. Okay? And it's simple. If everybody here is making money, we don't have a problem. We're looking for opportunities to make even more money. And that's the idea of the stock market. We're all here trying to make money. The problem is, if your stock is down 40-50%, what's on your mind? Sana, bumawi. Sana magrali konti. Sana matabla lang ako sa talo ko. And what happens is, you're not in the stock market to make money. You're in the stock market para hindi ka lang matalo. How ironic. Okay? And that's the case for a lot of stocks that are going down and going down, dropping 50-60%. They won't go up in a short, in the long time. That's why a lot of times after this capitulation happens, normally this process of unwinding all that resistances that happened in between Usually, that's the rational portion, and that's where reversals start to come in. And that's where today's topic is all about. Okay? So, first part, just to show you what capitulation looks like, is that this drop here, way below the 200-day EMA, ADX above 50, you'll start to see panic selling start to come in. So, there are three things. We look for ADX rising above 50, MACD way below zero, and if there's volume, just for added value, you'll see the hard to see volume start to come in. That means people are finishing their orders at any given price. Sometimes there's volume, sometimes there's not, but majority of the time, there's always going to be ADX50 and MACD way below zero. Okay? So for this irrational, panic selling all the way down here. Okay? This is actually just last year. Panic selling all the way down here. If you look at ADX above 50, it's already ADX above 50. If you look at MACD, it's way below zero. And if you look at volume, at the very bottom, volume is at its highest. 
Okay? In this portion here. Okay? I'm just trying to illustrate what capitulation looks like. The reason why is because we're not seeing one anymore today. Why? Because the market's already rallying. Okay? But my point is, when you see it next time, at least you know that it could most likely be an opportunity than for you to be scared. Okay? Next one. This is LTG. Okay? From 23 pesos, LTG fell over 50% because of the excise tax that happening in tobacco. Okay? But this time, if you look at ADX, ADX above 50, this is the time also when LTG was making record profits. Because even though excise tax went up, everybody excise tax went up. Okay? And the benefit about what's happening with tobacco is that if it's more expensive and you have to choose behind cigarettes, most people would pick Marlboro. Okay? So what happened is, ADX above 50, MACD way below zero, and if you look at volume, it's at record high at the bottom. Okay? So again, if you're spotting irrational selling, let MACD, let your ADX tell you when it's something irrational. But what I'm showing to you guys, both companies are legitimate businesses. There's something good happening with the company. Preferably what you don't want. Okay? This is SurePass. ADX above 50. You guys see it? MACD, way below zero. May volume naman. Alba, right? Which is correct. Right? There is a difference. Because what's happening with SurePass is that there's a problem with the business. Okay? So please, there is very big difference even though they might look alike. Remember, if it's capitulating and there's a valid reason why it's capitulating, maybe the best thing to do is not do anything. Okay? Clear? So again, remember to pick and choose your battles. Not everything, just because it's being panic sold, is an opportunity. Okay? That's what we want. Okay. So, most important part is today about reversals. Why? It's because you're seeing a lot of reversals that are happening today. In fact, some of the stocks that I was supposed to write before they broke out two days ago, I was finished my chart, you had BDO, you had a lot of second, third liners. And what's important, again, is to know, again, you know the company and your fair values. Look for stocks that are stronger or at least the same as the market. And this is the third part. Okay. If you don't know what durations and consolidations are, I suggest you listen to Lawrence's talk last year on position trading. He shared about looking for coils and looking for durations, looking for consolidations. Okay. I will not go over that. But ideally, when you're picking bottoms after that first irrational selling, what you want is for you to show signs of strength and for the next consolidation to happen. Why do consolidations happen after panic selling? It's like what I told you guys a while ago. Because there's so much resistances that is happening. And you need to unwind all those people who still want to throw up. And think of it this way. I always have this analogy, but my analogy is always bad. Okay? It's like you're always going to a club. Uh, whether you go to a club or not, that's different. That's lasinga. Right? Lasinga, sumuwa ka. Pag sumuwa ka na, technically okay ka na. Diba? Lasing ka, sumuka ka, technically okay ka na. But sometimes, sa sobrang lasing mo, gusto mo pa sumuka. Pero pag sumusuka ka, laway na lang. Alam niyo yung feeling niyo yun? Indirectly, that's what we're looking for in reversals. Because that's what's happening. After that initial sell-off and that capitulation, people who are still stuck are still trying to liquidate and sell whatever shares that they have left, pero wala na. Laway na lang lumalabas. That's your reversals. Okay? So that's the part about what we're trying to understand. We're looking for durations and consolidations after the panic. And usually, criteria that you'll see, MACD is usually near zero. Prices are above or near the 200-day EMA. And six months to one year of consolidation from the lowest point. Why did I say six months to a year? And this goes back to what I explained a while ago. Usually, we use six months because it's two quarters worth of earnings. So again, going back to CHP, first time, na grow. Lahat tayo, duda pa. Ako, duda pa rin ako. So normally, what majority of people are looking for is next quarter. Mga totoo na. Pag duda ka pa rin, another quarter. 
Okay? It's the same thing with what happened to SSI. First quarter of 2018, they were growing at 10-15%. Duda ka pa. Second quarter, 10-15%. Duda ka pa rin. Pagdating ng fourth quarter last year, they grew 40%. Now, lahat ng tao, nakati- Uy, nag-grow na SSI 40%. Okay? But they already told you at the start of the year last year that they were about to grow. Okay? So in most cases, companies need at least six months to a year of consolidation coming from the bottom. And the reason why, it's because most people are looking for confirmation on earnings. Okay? So again, from the lowest point here, this is the lowest point, you're looking for at least six months to a year after. I did this, let me be clear, I did this presentation on last week. So when I submitted it, ni pa umake ito. This is BDO. Okay? So we're looking for six months from the bottom here. So this is one, two months, three, four, five, six months of consolidation from the bottom. Okay? okay. So we're looking for stocks that are near MACD. This is your MACD, near zero indicating that it's still undergoing some form of consolidation. Okay? Now, the question is, what's the fair value? Mura ba o mahal? Okay? People ask me, it's our top choice in the bank. If you're picking a bank and you're picking any stock in any sector, I always tell people, always choose the best company. Okay? So, prices near the 200-day, EMA, and it's consolidating for the last, especially here. This last one, two, three, four, five months. This is over six months, though, from the top to the bottom at the near zero. So that's what we're looking for. Okay? If you like the company, and I'll show you guys an example later of companies that I don't like that look like this. Okay? And if you want to do it now, you can take a look. It's IMI. I don't like it. It was consolidating. I thought there was an issue. That's why we don't participate in all consolidations. That's why you need to understand the company behind every single stock that you buy. Okay? Good. Another example. This is everybody's almost year and a half in the making. Although I only have a one-year chart of this. This is RLC. This company, for over one year, this is way, way before this one, has been going sideways for a long period of time. This is more than eight months, but from the one-year chart, it's eight months already. Okay? So, MACD, if you look at it, near zero, breaking out of the 200-day and consolidating near the 200-day EMA. Okay? So, when you're looking for turnarounds and looking for companies and you're charting, and you look at every single company that you're participating in, and you see a durations and you see consolidations that are happening, what's important is to find out what's going to take it to the next level. If there's a valid reason, it's a great company, they're continuing to grow, they're changing their business strategy and doing things that are positive, then obviously these are chances for us to find a way to participate. The reason why it stayed here for a long period of time, it's because similar to what happened to CHP, RLC also went through share rights offering, I believe, two years ago. Okay? Now, this is MPI. Okay? Everybody's favorite hospital. Okay. One year from the bottom to near the 200 day EMA. This is your 200 day EMA. Okay? MACD near zero. Consolidating also for the last four months. Pero, Buba pa. Okay? So, my point is, okay? My point is, please, going back to this morning, learn how to cut when you're wrong. Okay? Just because it went down doesn't mean it's a bad company. Maybe it's telling us it just needs more time. That means one year is not enough. It still needs more time. Okay? Clear? Okay. So reversals is about two parts and the two entries. First is your aggressive entry, and second is your conservative entry. And the second part about understanding every single stock that you're going to be doing before we do our exercise is that you always need to have a stop loss. So somebody asked me over the break, 
I know my entry, I'm buying at this price, what's my stop loss? Okay? That means hindi siya trader. That means investor siya. Okay? So today, I'm trying to give you guys semblances of what is a stop loss and what, how do we identify that price before we get stopped out. And first is about aggressive entry. Okay? This is very common. And the reason why, it's because in reversals, in reversals, when you know what's happening to the company, most cases, you'd be buying before the breakout even happens. Okay? This is ICT. Okay? I don't think you guys can see it here. It's very small. So usually, when we see consolidations, what we're looking for is ranges quieting down at certain periods. So if you're buying it here, if you're buying it here, these are very what we call aggressive entries. Okay? These are usually anticipation. Now, the conservative part about buying is when it actually breaks out. So, consolidation, buying actually at the breakout. That's the reacting part. Okay? So, whenever, remember, whenever you're participating in any single reversal, first identify where you want to be buying. You want to be buying when it's quiet and aggressive, or you want to be buying at least pagtotona when it breaks out. Okay? Nonetheless, nonetheless, if you're buying aggressive or buying conservative, what's more important is that you know where your stop loss is. Okay? And when we're identifying stop losses, it's always at the pattern low. Okay? So if you, this is your consolidation here, and this is your duration that's happening here, your aggressive is buying cheap, conservative is buying when it breaks out, your stop loss is always at the pattern low. Okay? Clear so far? Are we good? So again, this is first gen. Okay? If you notice, all the stocks that I'm showing you here today all happened in the last seven, eight months. Okay? If you look at the stock market today, parang hindi pa umakyat. If you look at the PSEI today, I will show you, it looks like it's finishing its duration. But even though it's finishing in duration, in the last four months, a lot of stocks have already gone into new high. Right? So my point is, is that you have to be mentally prepared to know what to do in the next coming months. So at least when it happens, you don't get carried away. Again, this is first gen. Buying when it's quiet, and you know that there's a duration already happening. MACD is already near zero. Conservative is when it actually breaks out. And when you're putting your stop loss, it's always at the pattern low. Okay? If you want further clarifications what durations and consolidations look like, please, again, go to CUL YouTube and look for Lawrence's talk on position trading last year. It's more concise. The reason why is this is longer is because I had to talk about the fundamental side of things. Okay. So, the best part about all of this is for us to do a workshop. Okay. And you guys have a paper there. And in fact, the funny part about this is that Seb just broke down two days ago. So this is perfect just to show you that I'm wrong. Okay. So there's three stocks there. One, two, and three for Cebu, Pacific, Mega Wide, and Mrs. G. Okay. All I want you guys to do is first thing is identify where that duration is. So I'll draw a line at the top to identify where the buying pattern is. Okay. Put a line at the bottom to identify where your stop loss and that low of that pattern is. Okay. And then answer your questions on the right side of that exercise. You have questions about what your buying price is, what your stop loss price is, how many shares you're buying, and total amount, which is if you have your VAR calculator that you have a while ago, or if you want to do it manually, you can easily do it. Okay? I'll give you guys five minutes to do it. Then we'll do it all together. Okay. So this is the first chart I have here on the board. And this is Cebu Pacific. Okay. So when you're looking at any single company, normally what happens first is this one. So this is the, what I talked about, extreme panic situation. Okay. So if you notice about extreme panic, normally, extreme pa this rally here 
If you notice about chairman's presentation a while ago, he takes advantage of this part here so that he'll get this bounce here. Because this bounce is over 25% already. Okay? My point of this discussion is that after these selling panics happen, normally matagal yan. So even though it rallies here, don't think that this is small. This is a very big rally. This is almost 20%. Okay? Usually they take so much time and effort that normally when they retest, they see a very normal. So what I'm sharing to you guys, in the reversal process, normally you want to wait after. Okay? So you want this to show signs of strength, this rally here. So at least when this consolidation happens, if it's a good company, then we can find a way to participate. Okay? So normally when we're drawing something, whenever you're drawing any single pattern, and you don't know, there are many patterns in technical analysis that you'll probably learn and go throughout. You have wedges, boxes, triangles, so on and so forth, uh, a cloud or whatever. My point is, the fastest thing to identify is that assume, assume everything is a box. That's the fastest way to assume a consolidation. So if you're drawing anything, just get this box and assume everything is just a box. Okay? So let me just draw my line here. Draw my line here and draw my line here. Okay? It's a box. Now, to get a better entry, what we do is get this line. If you can find a way to turn it instead of here to diagonal by trying to find a way to connect the points, this is the ideal. Okay? Simple lang ginawa ko. Ah. I just assumed everything is a box. If I can find a way to connect it, this is always the better way to do it. Okay? And then if I drew my line, especially in your chart, it's supposed to be here. But two days ago, it broke down. But that's live. Okay? Just so happens I picked the wrong stock at the wrong time. Okay? Clear so far? So if you're buying it, let's say, assume it's conservative, you want to be buying it here, around 86. You put your stop loss here at 81 something. Okay, if you're buying it aggressive, you could have bought it during these times at 82, but at least your stop loss is very tight. At least you should know where you're going to be selling in the event that you are wrong. Okay? So the question is, what now? Does this mean baba na to? The answer is, we don't know. Okay? So what, what's important is that whatever happens now, well, if you're out or not, what, what should be important is that if this still goes down and starts to rally, what's important is what happens next. So if this still quiets down after, and you draw your line, like what I did, then we can find a way to participate in Cebu Pacific again next time. Okay? So we just need to find out what's happening with Cebu Pacific. Why is Gokong Wei and JGS continuously buying back their shares in Cebu Pacific? Is it cheap? Is it expensive? Why? Why is it going down? Because of oil prices? Is it something sustainable? So on and so forth. Okay? So there's a lot of positives and there's some negatives happening with Cebu Pacific. To me, I think it's still attractive, but obviously timing is more important than anything else. Okay? Clear? Any questions? I won't solve the paper on the right. If you have your VAR calculator, it should be very easy to do. Okay? Next is Megawide. Okay? So after going down so long, after going down so long, it rallies and then enters duration. This is easier. So if you're drawing your lines, very easy to do. Simple? So after going up, we're just looking for consolidations and it's quieting down. That's all we're looking for. So if you're buying here at conservative, whether it's here at 1850 or buying it quiet, Somewhere around here, it just depends on whether you're buying it aggressive here or buying it more conservative as it starts to break out. Okay? Clear so far on durations and on reversals? So we're not trying to look for this part, this extreme panic. Normally, it's always better to enter after the fact, after it starts to rally and consolidates. This is the most important part. Because if it's weak, if there's a problem with the company, when this rallies, this, if it's weak and there's a problem, this will continue to go down. Make sense? So what's, what's important is that after this rallies, what's important is to see what happens after. That's my point. That's why usually when we're participating in reversals, it's usually after 
the fact we're not trying to catch this ball because nobody knows if it's going to hold here. Yeah, and I can give you guys many examples. So, like PXP recently. I'll show it later. Okay. Last but not the least. Oops. Okay. And I drew a chart there on the right side. I drew my own consolidation. I hope it looks nice. Okay. So if you're participating and you like these companies, at least you know when you're drawing your boxes, it should be here. Okay. If there's a way for you to align it better, then obviously this would be more optimal. Okay. So if you're buying it aggressive, you have your price here. If you're buying conservative at the breakout, it's here. What's important is that you should always know what your stop loss is. Okay? So if you miss this at the capitulation, it's fine. What's important is that when these durations start to happen, we should find a way for us to participate after. Okay? And the reason why I'm sharing this to you guys today is because in the last four months, ang daming nangyari. Okay? There's a lot of companies that are trying to break out and reversing. Okay? But there's also a lot of companies that after it hits a certain resistance, it starts to go down. Those are the ones you want to avoid. Okay? So just to give you guys other examples. Breakout. Right? Starting to reverse. But it starts to fall back below. Why? What's happening with Toyota? What's happening to the car sales? It's still going down. It's still not picking up. Okay? So at least when you try to understand why it's going down, at least it makes sense. But there's a reason why these companies are... I'm not saying GTCAP is a bad company. That's not my point. Okay? What I'm saying is that usually companies that have problems in the short term, if you look at the business, there's a reason why most of these are still down. And it takes time for these guys to unwind. Okay? So, other companies... You have SECB. After rallying to resistance, you have your durations now start to appear. Now, if you like it, like what's happening today, it started to break out because hopefully we have an hour cut soon. If you ask me, this is what our number one pick is in the bank sector. So after this capitulation, if you miss it, that's fine. What's important is what happens after in this reversal when it starts to quiet down. There's no excuse for you guys not to participate in these stocks in the duration and consolidations that happen after this, from this lowest point. Okay? Clear so far? And same thing with SSI. After going up from the bottom, if you notice this bottom to here, it's almost eight, nine months also, this entire consolidation. Okay? What's important is that after this rallies, what's important is the consolidation that happens after. It's not about catching bottoms. It's what happens on the consolidation after that lowest point. That's when we get to maximize and get to sit and ride as much as we can. Okay? Because if you're participating in capitulation, you have to make the expectation that when it rallies, it, you have to sell. Because matagal talaga will turn around. Companies just don't turn around in one go unless there's something event-driven. Okay? Normally, it takes so much time for companies to turn around. And that's why when you're waiting for that time it takes for it to turn around, usually that's the optimal time for us to enter during this period of reversal. So you see this a lot today, whether it's in all the different types of sectors that you'll come about. Reversals will be so common. And the reason why, because if I show you our PSEI, after this bottom point, it rallies People ask me this rally, that's not important to me. What's important is the duration after this rally. Okay? So if I draw my box, at least it should be able to identify. Then it's your consolidation. So the question is, hey, upside ba? That's the important question. Is, this fundamental, is there fundamental reason enough for this to be sustained? Okay. 
If you ask me, my answer is yes, but obviously you have to keep your expectations in check. And that's why if you notice about Juanes' talk this morning, it's always about stock picking. Okay? You have to be very selective about the type of companies that you are buying. And that's why if you ask me about just buying anything across the board, the answer is no. You have to pick and choose which ones you like. Stock picking today and fundamental analysis has never been more important. Okay? If you look at all the traders and you're trading your momentum stocks, even though your market looks like this, you'll probably see none. In fact, the last momentum stock that we've probably seen in the market was PHA. Everything else was not even counted. Okay. So when you're learning about all these companies, I'll tell you, fundamental analysis will play a huge role. It's just a matter of understanding and, pick, and stock picking and choosing which ones and the fastest horse will go higher. Okay? So can we move back to my presentation? Fine? Okay. So, okay. just to wrap things up again. Okay. These are the three stocks. Just to wrap things up again, okay? Capitulation is very important to understand. Don't get me wrong. We made a lot of money in capitulation, but you have to understand the circumstances when it comes to capitulation. It's usually a form of extreme selling driven, again, by market sell-offs, not fundamental driven sell-offs, okay? If it's a fundamental driven sell-off, meaning may problema yung kompanya, please step aside. If the company is turning around and business is turning around, wait for the earnings to come in and participate in the reversal instead. Okay? If you're participating again in capitulation, please remember it's largely driven by the market. Okay? Because even if it goes up, it will take a long time before it actually reverses. Some signs of indication that maybe something might be positive, you'll start to see buybacks come in you'll start to see participation by the insiders and the shareholders. Okay? Second, reversals take a lot of time. From the bottom to where it is today, normally it's approximately at least six months because six months is at least two quarters worth of earnings. And you need earnings to verify and, valid and verify all the problems that there's going back to growth, there's still a situation. And so if you look back to CHP, from 10 to 7 pesos, earnings were declining. 7 to 3 pesos, even at 3, earnings of CHP was still declining. 3 to 150, may problema pa rin. But for the first time in this quarter, now they're showing signs of growth. Now the question is, is it true or not? And is it sustainable or not? Because if it is, then maybe we might see some changes happen to the overall cement sector itself. Okay? So... When you're looking at reversals, make sure you understand the reason. This is a fundamentally driven exercise. The reason why, it's because actually spotting the consolidation, if you notice, should be very easy. And if you learn and you try to listen, they'll come in different forms. Some might look at it as a Darvis box, a consolidation, or duration. They all mean the same. If you want to draw your wedges, whatever type of formation you see, I'll tell you. They're all boxes. And all you have to do is just realign on a better buying point and make your life simple. Okay? And third is always have a plan. Okay? Don't come into trading if you don't have a plan. Meaning you have to know where your stop loss is, where your entry is, and where your exit will be. Okay? Don't come into trading and assume pag mo, long term na tayo lahat. Okay? You guys came into trading and you got to make sure that every single thing that you do, you have a plan. I'll share with you guys one last quote before I end and it's by Confucius. And the reason why, it's because Confucius always talks about reflection and it's the noblest type of learning. In fact, that's what later on in data analytics will help you. It's about understanding and doing your data. If you've never done a journal before, today is the perfect time for you to do it. If you've never done a journal in the last 40, 50 years, I'll tell you, it's never too late. You need to do a journal. I've done a journal of every single trade I've done in the last nine years. Even chairman hasn't done a journal. But at least today, the journal is in the chairman. Okay? Kaya nga nasulat niya lahat ng example niya. Kasi first time lang niya na, na, nasulat lahat ng nangyari sa buhay niya. Okay? Second, okay? the most noblest 
is about reflection. The second type of learning okay, is learning from other people's mistakes. And that's the fastest. Imitation is, not, is the easiest way for you to learn. Learning from other people. The reason why is because don't go through what we went through anymore. The reason why we explain our stories, the reason why Chairman had to share his stories about Anscor and everything, so that you don't buy two board seats and become a shareholder of Anscor. Okay? If you want to do it by yourself, bahala kayo. Okay? And the third one is about going through your own experience. And it's the most bitterest. Okay? Like what Confucius said. The reason why is because if you want to experience things on your own, I will tell you, good luck. Because you'll need it as much as you can. Because in the stock market, you get through your own experience, I will tell you, it will be more painful going through it on your end instead of trying to learn from what we were able to share to you guys here today. So I hope there's something you guys were able to learn. Um, we're going through Q&A. And that's it. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Sir Edmund Lee. Another round of applause to our expert.